Hi, welcome to the part eight of this playlist. Here we are looking at AWS Certified Developer Associate real certification questions. Please do refer the other parts already put on this playlist. All real questions, real answers. Hit the subscribe and the like button. You may pause this video and read this carefully. So there is a website and it is running on EC2 instance. So this is a website. This is running on EC2 instance and logging is happening. And sometimes what happens is there is a traffic search because of which there are numerous logs. And what will numerous logs do? It will fill the disk capacity. It's obvious if you keep creating a lot of log files, you will run out of disk space. Now you want to give a solution. You have to choose one of these so that this doesn't occur. So the first option says do log rotation. So the log rotation, how it works is, you know, within the like EC2 instance means, uh, you know, this is EC2 instance. That means it is storing the logs in EBS. Okay, because each EC2 instance has a EBS volume associated with it. So that is my understanding. And log rotation within the uh, EBS itself will not work because it is getting full. No, so within EBS, how it will work? So th that's why this is wrong. Now B says you install CloudWatch agent on the instance, which is fine. On this instance, no, this instance, we will install the agent. Okay, and this agent will constantly send the logs to CloudWatch. So there is another service called CloudWatch, and it is meant for this only to uh, take the logs. And then it will delete the log from the instance once it is sent to CloudWatch. So it will send to CloudWatch and then delete it from the EBS volume. This looks correct to me. So if you see this documentation, it is possible to collect metrics and logs from EC2 instances and put them on the CloudWatch. So for this, you need to install CloudWatch agent on your on-premises servers. Okay, C says that you use auto scaling on EBS. So this is EBS and you just auto scale the EBS. It doesn't work that way. The EC2 instance auto scales and due to which the EBS volumes will also auto scale. So uh, see nobody stores EBS, uh, the logs in the EBS stuff. That is not the right solution. So this is wrong. And D is talking about event bridge. See if you want to build an event driven application, then we should use this in a SaaS, uh, like a SaaS model. So it is used to deliver a stream of real time data from event sources like if it can be Zendesk, Shopify and the target can be Lambda or any SaaS applications. So suppose there is an event and you want to trigger Lambda. So you can use event bridge in between. It will help you trigger the event and call Lambda. But in this case, you see event bridge. We are not building an event based application here. It is saying that you build a rule to pull the logs from the instance and etc. Why? I mean, if you can uh, catch your ears straight away. Why would you, you know, take your hands behind your head to do that? So this is wrong. This is my final answer. Okay. Now let's look at this question. So you have a business and they are developing a REST service and they are using API gateways with Lambda. So API and gateway and Lambda is being used. What is API gateway? So if you are building APIs at scale, you can use API gateways and you can you know, use it's an AWS service and you can create, maintain, monitor APIs. Okay, it's simple. What can be APIs for what? For example, there can be an API where it is putting some metrics in CloudWatch. A simple example. So like that, there can be various APIs. If you are building a microservice based architecture, then there are so many components that you can build APIs for that. Okay, so I gave you multiple examples for API gateways and it is integrated with Lambda. What is Lambda? It is a serverless computing and you can run your code without thinking about servers or clusters. It is serverless. See for testing, you want to run several versions. Okay, because you know, you keep developing it, you find a bug and then again you release a new version and you keep testing. So that is pretty normal. And you want to know what is the most cost effective approach. So the first one says use X version header. So this I will mark it wrong because see I could not search what is X version header. Okay, I don't know. I can only spot these, for example, X forwarded prefix and etc. I can spot these, but I could not spot the, the X version headers. So I will give this a miss and I will mark it wrong. Let's look at the second one. You can create a API gateway Lambda authorizer. 
to route API clients to correct API version. See, this is the wrong approach. The question is never saying that, you know, if someone logs in, he can see version 1.0 and someone else can see one version 1.1, someone else can see 1.2. It's not that way. Everybody needs to see the latest version. Simple. So this is wrong because it is giving you option that you can you can choose the correct API version, etc. Third says that you create an, a resource policy to isolate versions. See, resource policy, common sense, it is used to control access to the APIs with API gateway resource policies. Now, here there is no requirement to control access. Is anybody talking about controlling access or security? No. So why will this be correct? This is wrong. So that leaves us with only one option, which is the correct option. So we will deploy this as unique stages and unique points using stage variables. So there is a clear cut documentation where it says you can work with stages for HTTP APIs. You can create stage variables and it also works with Lambda functions. And hence, this is the final answer. Let's move forward. Let's look at this one. You can pause the video here, read it carefully and come back, please. See, there is an application and, and it makes use of a database that this database is RDS database. And what you have to do is you have to implement encryption at rest. As a developer, what will you do to satisfy this requirement? What is encryption at rest? See, encryption, there are two types, encryption at rest and encryption in transit. What you do is if you have a database and in this database, if the data is there and the data is st uh, like, stagnant it is just not on the in the process but it is resting there that is encryption at rest but if you have an application suppose and between this and this you want to implement encryption in transit because on the way somebody should not steal the data if you do encryption at rest when the data is sleeping in this database nobody can steal this but when the data is on the move in transit that time also nobody should steal it that is called encryption at transit that is done using tls okay but here we do not use tls because we want to encrypt at rest let's look at the options the first one says you enable encryption on db instance see this option is not available in rds suppose you already have an rds database and it was not encrypted so you have say 100 terabytes of data it is not encrypted now what you do you cannot change the encryption of that database instance and the data will be automatically encrypted it doesn't work that way this is wrong this option is not there now the other one says you stop the d database instance okay but stop and do what so let's park this for now for me this is wrong but let's park this for now Third, C says, restore the database instance from encrypted snapshot. This looks correct. But before that, one step should come. Take a snapshot of the database instance and create an encrypted copy of the snapshot. See, the only way this data can be encrypted is that you take a snapshot and encrypt that snapshot. And then you restore the database instance from this snapshot. Okay. So that's why D will come before C you will take a snapshot of a database instance, you will create an encrypted copy of the snapshot and then you will restore from that encrypted snapshot and then your database will become encrypted at rest. This one, okay? See, the last one, option E, I'm not even covering that. This is a common sense. KMS, see, why KMS is used? Because you want to encrypt using keys. The keys are stored in KMS, but here we do not uh, I mean, we will use KMS, but that is not the primary answer that we are looking for. You want to satisfy the requirement. First, D and C will suit the purpose. Hence, these will be the answer. See, some insights to RDS encrypted database instances. What happens is it is encrypted using AES-256 encryption algorithm. This is industry certified. It is an industry standard. See, many clients, you go and you tell, I am going to encrypt it. They tell that I have an audit team and they will assess whether you are encrypting in a right way, which is as per industry standard. So if you are on AWS, you, you don't have to worry about it. You will say, I am just using uh, the RDS encryption, which is as per the industry standard AES-256. See, if you are creating a fresh database, a new application, then you should ask the client for the requirement. If there is a requirement for encryption, then set that parameter on at the db instance level initially itself so that you don't have to worry about the snapshot and recovery from the snapshot and those things and this setting can be done through console through cli and through rds apis this question specifically falls under this category you can only encrypt rds db instance when you create it first time creation not after the db instance is already created 
okay but if you have already done it then you encrypt a copy of unencrypted snapshot and then you can recover from that snapshot so this is the paragraph that answers our question please remember you cannot disable encryption on an encrypted db instance okay enough of this concept let's look at the next question see this question in a nutshell you are already using dynamo db and the problem is that when you are trying to read the data why i am saying you are trying to read the data because when you are trying to get the data get is read the data it is taking longer time always remember when you are trying to read the data apply your thumb rule if during the reading there is latency or performance issues then caching is the solution do you see caching as an option here out of these four do you see yes we see this for dynamo db dax we call it dax dynamo db accelerator this works as a caching mechanism in memory cache for dynamo db databases and it delivers performance which is 10 times faster from milliseconds to microseconds that is what the promise aws gives so aws always does like dax will always do the heavy lifting and it will reduce the load on developers because earlier if you put developers they had to do cache invalidation data population cluster management nothing is required boss dax will do it for you it's a managed service and hence this is my answer but let us also quantify a b and c why these are wrong the a says use secondary indexes for trading data see there are two types of secondary indexes global secondary index and local secondary index what does index help you with it helps you with reads now you might ask why this cannot be the solution because d is more apt than a because see a what will do is still your queries will hit the database it will go through the index and it will try to you know make that scan faster using index scans but if you put cache then the the work that was already done at the database level that is already stored in the cache okay just use it from the cache so that there is no more database processing required there another thing is you need 1 millisecond latency with secondary index i am pretty sure meeting the 1 millisecond requirement would be pretty tough hence i would strike off this let's look at b it says store the trading data in s3 crap and then use transfer acceleration s3 s3 always remember the thumb rule it's a cheap storage when you are want to save the cost you go on s3 when you want performance you do caching hence in this case this is a perfect scenario for caching because they need performance 1 millisecond is high performance that's why b is wrong let's see c It is telling you to do exponential back off. See, error retries and exponential back off. You as a developer, if you have written an API code and you are dealing with DynamoDB database, there is an option where you can use exponential back off. What it does is it progressively waits longer time before it retries. Suppose the API command goes there and tries to fetch the data. It says, "Okay, I'm trying to fetch the data. I don't get the data." Okay, instead of doing it every two second, five second, ten second, it will wait. It will wait for like twenty seconds or a minute and then fetch the data. That is exponential back off. But dude, do you have time to wait that much time? Twenty seconds, forty seconds, one minute? No, you want one millisecond, right? this is your requirement 1 millisecond so how will exponential back off work i would strike this off this is my final answer this brings us to the end of part 8 please please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button it takes a lot of effort to analyze and put in these contents for you so that you don't have to go through the documentation you don't have to do the hard work i have already done the heavy lifting for you and this all comes free of cost so the only thing that you can do is subscribe and like please remember there are several playlists which will help you with clearing aws azure and gcp certifications leverage the knowledge which is there on this cloud channel please focus on the concepts even if these are real certification questions i would still insist strongly insist focus on the concepts learn the technique to sort the weeds and arrive at the right answer learn the technique to break the questions so that it is easier for you to arrive at the right answer stay tuned 
see you in the next part ciao